Hello everyone and welcome back to Rosito's Age of Engineering. This will be episode 8. I hope you guys are all doing good this evening because I've been doing some mining and I've got some crafting to do. One of the things that I noticed is I don't have a way to kill bad guys so I put some stuff in here, mainly some manulum and electrum. Manulin is made by one ardite and one cobalt smelted together, alloys into manulin. And then one silver and one gold allied together to make two electrum. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some of this and I am going to make myself a sword. So the first thing that I need is a wide guard cast. This is I'm going to make out of Electrum. It gives me just this little extra damage punch when I hit them for the first time. Electrum will charge, uh, build up an electric charge before the hit. And now all I have left in there is manual. I should have three pieces and one left. So two pieces for the sword blade. Let that dry. <coughs> Boom, boom, and one piece left for the tool rod. Bam, there I go. I have all the pieces I need to my manulin blade. And let's get rid of some tin because we need to take care of some of these ores that we've been processing. That's right, I did go mining in the meantime. I didn't come up with a whole heck of a lot, but... Is it just automatic now? Oh, it used to be that it wouldn't go into the slot. That's cool. So 10.27 attack damage, that's good. And then of course I can upgrade this with some things. Uh, one of the things that I'm definitely gonna wanna do with that one is the Mending Moss, just because I don't like having to repair my, my equipment if I don't have to. So I don't have any of that on me, but fortunately you can make Mending Moss with the chisel you just need nine of those. So let me go grab my chisel. It should be in the chest. There we go. And right click in the air and put it to mossy stone. Now take that mossy stone and in a three by three all mossy stone it gives you a ball of moss. You take that and you right click on a bookshelf. I put one out here somewhere. Boom! It takes up ten levels. I had eighteen. Now I have eight. Now I can take that and put it on my sword as my first modifier, which will use some of the experience that I get with my sword and turn it into damage repair. So I won't have to repair my sword pretty much ever unless I go crazy and just spend like an hour hitting things. But even then, I don't think I would have to repair it. These are all the ores that I have to go through right now. So I'm processing some iron right now. I actually got about a full stack, which turns into two stacks of iron, which is what I need. Steel is still steel, you know, doing its thing. <coughs> <coughs> All right, so what is on the agenda for today? I have a couple of crafting items that I want to do that are a little bit more involved. So it's just got one block left. I need to wait until that copper finish that finishes up before loading up the copper. Well, I can load up the iron first, and then the copper. All right, so there's a couple things I want to craft. Let me see what they were. Yes, first things first is this is not enough power to do the empowering that I want to do. This single water mill, uh, remember we set that up, is not going to be enough to run what we want it to run. So we're going to have to upgrade our power. And for that, I have everything I need here for the next set of power, which is the canola press and everything that is associated with that. So I'm just going to go ahead and take everything here because this is everything that I need including what's in the compressor? I think it's in the compressor. Nope, I even did that. Sweet. All right. So first things first, I want to get the... Is that what this one is? Yes, I want to get the... So I'm going to need each of these pieces. So first of all, I'm going to start with the canola press because that's the one that actually does stuff. So it looks like I'm missing an Inori crystal and the advanced coil. The advanced coil, I need to take that to gold and extrude it. So that's going to give me that. And then the Anoria crystal, I actually take one of these and then hit it with a laser, if you guys remember. So, boom and boom. The Anori crystal. And once I have these extruded, do, 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 do. bam. All right, so now I come back here to the crafting table, canola press. It's actually going to start with this and then move to the advanced coil afterwards. Now I should have everything that I need for the canola press. Holy cannoli! 
All right, so the canola press is going to require power to run, so I'm just going to go ahead and set that right here for the time being. And do I have any canola, canola I can put in there, like actual canola? Open sesame, no. But I did start running a canola farm. That's these right here, once those, those aren't quite finished. They need to bud one more time and then they'll be ready to harvest for canola and we can start getting some canola, canola that's this stuff right here, and that will be put into the press. The next step in the process is the fermenting barrel. The fermenting barrel is a heck of a lot easier. I do need the wood casing here, which it looks like I have everything for. And then I need one more Anori crystal, so let's go make that. Doom. The hard part is a generator, and you'll see why in a minute. So the fermenting barrel looks like I have everything I need. Bam, there we are, cruising right along. So this will actually auto output fluids to whatever is close. And so I'm actually gonna wanna move this a little bit. So I'm gonna wanna do this the other way. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm going to use a canola press and convert the canola into oil. It's gonna go into the fermenting barrel and go from a unfermented to a fermented. I don't really know what the difference is in that is. Hmm. Interesting. Interesting. I don't honestly know. But the last part of this setup is the oil generator from Actually Editions. Those iron casings right there. Remember those things are a beast. So that's what I got to make it first. And that is going to require not one, but two advanced uh, blocks. So if you remember right, the advanced machine casing is something that's needed. I actually have everything I need for the two basic machine casings. It's just a matter of creating the rest of this. That gives me four carbon mesh. Remember, I have to compress two to one. And then I have the iron, the bronze, and the tin, which is what we need for the advanced alloy. That's the four advanced alloy, and that'll get compressed right after this is done. And then I have the steel running through that, and that will be this part right here. So I'll have all of the pieces to make two of these, and then, oops, and then I started with everything in my inventory to make that. So you can see I got the eight and the eight, and we should be good. So I will be right back when I'm ready to craft this. All right, and here we go. I've got both of those advanced alloys set in there. So boom, boom, two advanced machine casings. Take those, chuck it in there, and two iron casings. Perfect. I'm ready to make this, right? Well, no, I need some reinforced stone. You remember, reinforced stone is that calculator recipe. So I'll take my calculator here, and I will plug the reinforced stone. I need six of them. And now I have everything but the empowered canola. That's why we have the empower so we can do that. So it's this recipe in the empower that is crystallized canola seeds, super easy to make. And the canola empowering thing is actually really cheap. I think it's probably the cheapest recipe the empower has. So we're gonna go ahead and run that real quick and I'll do that on camera. So first, oh, hey, sweet, I have my other machine casing. Uh, I forgot I had done that. So while I was waiting, I just had one running because I know power is kind of an issue right now. Boom, and that's it. It hardly took anything out. You don't even see a drain in there. So that's all it takes to make the empowered now canola. Put that in here. Boom, the oil generator. And I need to sleep. Come on, daytime. Remember, I still am only running all of my IC2 machines off of that single solar panel. So it needs to be running pretty much all the time in order to keep up with the demands of everything that I have here. Oh, and I can probably throw more stuff in my smelter too. Oh man, you're still doing copper. Jeez, that was a lot of copper. All right, so the oil generator is gonna go down right, bam, here. So it should automatically pump out of the barrel into the oil generator, I hope. I don't know that. I may have to move all this. I'm just going to do it. I'm just going to do it now. So I'm going to move this down. I'm going to move this down here. Take that, put that in there. And so I will need some, not there. I will need some LV wire connectors here. 
here and here. And then I will need one wire relay right there, which will be fine because I will connect it to the other ones. And you need to connect, you need to connect, and you need to connect. Boom. So this should be... Actually, that's receiving only. I want this to generate. So you're all full up. That's great. You're fermenting into just straight up oil. Oh, I need to move this around a little bit. See, because right now this is set up so that this is outputting power only. And so I need it to be inputting power. And that actually happens on the other side of this wall. So this needs to come out and hook up to that one there. How the hell am I going to run this? Ugh. Rosito derps. Rosito derps a lot. Should be like my name. Rosito derps a lot. <laughs> Alright, so that can just run straight from there to there, most likely. It can, except that's not the one I want to run. The one I want to run is... This one to here, this one to... Yeah, connection obstructed, just what I thought. Here. To here. Oh, no. Now is it obstructed? Ah! The pain. So let me set it up, because I know you will work. And then you will work there. And then you will connect to there. Yeah, what a wiring nightmare. I hate every part of this. I'm going to redo this all. <laughs> Bear with me a minute. Okay, that's better. But not a ton. It's still super messy. And I will eventually clean it up, but for now, that's how I'm going to leave it. Please don't hate me. So that looks like that's transferred all into oil, but what I need to move that is probably one of... Well, first of all, I think I can actually move this tank and retain the oil because it did once already. Oh, that right there is my manual and sword charging. So now when I hit, it'll actually do more damage, which is kind of cool. And I just lost all the canola that I had in there. Perfect. Ugh. Derp. The derpitude is reaching maximum capacity. All right, so we're going to head out here and take a look at getting some iron bars and a piece of glass and making another one of these I will probably make like a hundred and fifty of these by the time it's all said and done because this is like one of the most basic fluid blocks in the game not basic, but uh, most versatile. You use it for a very, very long time. And so we input, pull from this side and push to this side. And so that will charge the generator. The generator will charge that. That will continue to charge that. But that should only run if that is not full, which means that's in use. So let's get some canola to throw in there. I actually swapped out the industrial hemp seeds that you guys might have seen out here for canola plants. That is not a whole lot. How much bone do I have? I need to bone meal some stuff. 27, that should be good. Fortunately, it's just a right click to harvest. You can sit here and go doo -doo -doo -doo, until you run out of bone meal. This is really great, except I'm also getting canola seeds, which I don't need. So, all those seeds, totally useless to me right now. Like, they'll come into effect later, because you can actually automate this to work with a higher tier oil. But for right now, I'm not going to bother setting that up, because my power needs are not that crazy. They'll get crazy, but they're not that crazy yet. So that feeds it into the canola press, takes it from the canola press, automatically drops it into the barrel, takes it from the barrel, pushes it into here and then back into the fluid tank. The fluid tank takes it and generates RF from that.
super full and it stops. It should stop. Why is it not stopping? Because right now it's just wasting oil. Oh, because this is running in, so it's refilling this instead of letting the water wheel refill it. That's not ideal. Is there a way to run this directly off the water wheel and not off of? Hmm. Hmm. I don't like this. Let's do this bit here. All right. I'm going to rewire again. I'll be right back. And there we go. I've done it. So I just crosswired it so that this is going into the battery. The water wheel is going to the battery, but the water wheel is supplying power to this before it reaches the battery. So it's not going to try and power itself with this because that's just a colossal waste of oil. And right now my oil collection is manual and I don't want to do that. Oh, nighttime. <clears throat> so next thing on my list is, so I do a lot of off-camera digging. And well, just putting it very bluntly, it sucks. So I'm going to do something that will make my off-camera digging life much, much easier. That is creating something new. The new thing that I am going to create is the traveler sack. I feel like I'm always putting stuff away. Eventually I'll have a sorting system so that I don't have to bore you guys with putting every tool right back in its correct position. It'll just automatically go there when I'm done with a particular project. So I need the traveler sack. The traveler sacks are very, very cool. Uh, they have a couple of special abilities that make them uh, pretty much dabomb.com when it comes to going mining. And I will show them to you now. So all of this we're done with. I will need one of these item filters. So I'm just going to go ahead and grab that later. You'll see what that's for. And so I don't need anything in this list here. So I'm just going to go ahead and get rid of all that. And then we are looking for a a traveler sack. That is made like so, but I need a white bag tier three. So a white bag is created by doing this. That should be easy enough. Let's create two of them, and there are reasons I want to. Oh, look, learning to carry. And so I need a white bag tier three. What does that look like? Well, I need one upgrade, and it looks like for the next one I need two upgrades. So I'll need three of these upgrades all together. Oh my goodness, each one uses three steel. So I need 18 steel, but fortunately I let it run. So I have 18 steel. And so I am going to, yes, I know I have the, I have the white bag. I need this. One, two, three, four, five, six. Ouch. All right. So upgrade that to a tier two. Upgrade that to a tier two. Upgrade that to a tier three. Upgrade that to a tier three. Now, oh, I need the void crystal block, and that's what this is for. Boom. So that is actually a block of coal hit with the laser. And I will actually need three of them in the end, so I'm just going to do them all now. Boing. Void crystal blocks. So pop, there is one. And pop, there is two. Now one of the things that I want is I'm tired of picking up all of this junk when I'm out mining. And so I want a way to filter all of this out from my normal pickup routine. And there's a way to do that with these tools. And it's fantastic. It is called the void sack. So I'm going to turn one of those into a void sack. So now I have the regular traveler sack and the void sack. Now the way that these work is they look at the item filter. So if you right click, it's got this. And I can whitelist or blacklist different things that are allowed to go in. Auto insert off. So I want auto insert on but I want it to be a whitelist. 
And so the whitelist is going to be anything that I put in this item filter. So let me go ahead and right click on the item filter and look at this. There's all these slots that I can say are things that should go in that whitelist. So I know that, uh, let's see, gravel is one of those things. Alabaster is one of those things. Uh, dirt is one of those things. I actually want to keep marble. And let's see. That's one, that's one, that's one, that's one. I have plenty of cobble. So here are all the things that I know should just go straight into that void sack and the basalt. So all of that should go into the void sack and I don't ever want to see that in my inventory again. So gravel, alabasta, basalt, and then all of these fun stuff here. Now, I right click on this and I'm actually going to apply that. When you click, it actually just copies it and puts it in there. So you can see the item filter is filled with all that. So now it'll auto pick up all of that stuff and throw it in here. And now this one I'm going to set up as well to auto pick up. And it's going to have a blacklist of items, but we're not going to worry about that black. Actually, I'm just going to throw the same blacklist in there. So it won't pick up these. So we'll pick up, won't pick up. So let's go ahead and test this. So ideally, when I walk over this, I won't have anything in the red bag and I won't have anything in the purple bag. In fact, those items will just vanish. Now, one thing, those can't be in your hotbar in order to work. They actually have to be out of your hotbar. So, boom. Okay, let's see what I got. Oh, nothing. What happened? They just disappeared into the void sack. This is amazing, especially when it comes to mining. So one of the great things about that is, let's take something like lead. All right, so lead is not on my, my white list here, so it won't go in there, but it also doesn't go in my inventory because auto pickup is on here. So I open that and boom, it's all sitting right there. Super, super fancy. Now I can't go so far as to create a couple of these and whitelist them for like coal and redstone and my, my, um, my maceratable stuff. Oof, I need to put some of this stuff in there. Nickel, osmium, bauxite, jeez. Anyways, I can do that, but I'm not really I don't really have any reason to do that right now. I might later, but I don't now. So I'm just going to hold off on that until I have a good reason to. All of that goes in quite nicely to get smelted in order. Order. All right, so I have a little bit, a lot of that. One of the things that I have been doing is kind of helping my chest there because those aren't very big chests. I mean, they're only, what, 27 spaces? So by taking them and condensing it manually, I actually get a little bit more use out of this chest than I otherwise would because otherwise it would be full. And that's where I have all of this extra tin and copper and a little bit of osmium. So I'm just dying to show you this to you. So I'm going to go mining for a little bit. You can see over there, there's another portal next to my mining portal. That is the mining portal from Aromas Mods. That is used by creating the mining multi-tool. Super duper easy recipe. That's all vanilla stuff. And then you use this mining multi-tool on just any kind of uh, stone brick or smelted stone, and it turns it into portal frames. Put the portal frames into a pattern like that and then light it up with that same multi-tool right clicking on it and you get your portal. It's time to go check out the portal. Alright, so this is the mining world that I got stuck with in a spawn. Yay. My little hole down is right here behind this tree. So I just go down. And when I reach an appropriate level for mining, which is not down this hole, because that would kill me. And I don't feel like doing anything special there, so I'm just going to start going down. I have to come up eventually. That'll be fun. Alright, so let's get a candle going. Ah, I can see! All right, cobblestone, yeah. Or not cobble, coal, yeah. So I'll just mine up some of this coal right here. 
And the best thing about mining right now is these little sacks are picking up everything that I'm mining, so I'm not going to have to do that at all. It's just already done. Honestly, I don't even know why I'm picking up osmium at this point, because I can't do anything with it for so long. It's just useless. By the time I can do stuff with it, I've got like auto smelting going and auto mining going and all that other stuff. It's just, why bother? That looks like some silver, some more dorite. Yeah, silver for the win. So all of these would normally be taking up space. Ooh, I get to show my sword. Ah, one hit, one kill. That's what I like. Now it only does that when it's charged, I think. Oh, nope. Even when it's not charged. One hit, one kill. That is a pretty nifty sword. That is a very, very nice thing to have when you are mining and bad guys are wanting to kill you. Again, I'm just mining because it's so darn cool that the backpack is picking things up and I don't have to worry about my inventory clogging up that I just had to show it to you a little bit more. Oh, let's see what it does for an Enderman. I'm not entirely sure. So charge, charge, okay. So I'm at my max damage right now. Let's see how bad it does an Enderman in. Where's my... Oh, where's my Enderman? Oh, there you are. Boom. Oh, that hurt him. Oh, dude, that was like three shots. Super easy. Look at that. My inventory is still clean. Everything has been going into the traveler's sack. Look at this. All this stuff. I basically just like tripled my inventory. It's perfect. Great for mining. So I am actually going to finish this little mining trip, and I will be back in a minute. And as you can see, my mining trip was quite successful. Look at all this great stuff that I got. Even some torches ended up in there. I also picked up some canola on my way back in. See, a lot of this stuff I can't actually smelt. So I'm just going to go ahead and pull all of that out. And then continue showing you guys something else. Very cool. So this particular device is a wonder when it comes to managing its own inventory. So everything here can be macerated, right? Check this out. Shift, right click. It dumps it all into here. So nothing else is left in here. So let me just go ahead and toss out everything that was in here so that you can see that shift click thing again because it is so darn cool. Remember it can't be in there. Pick all this stuff up. Oof, shift. And that all mostly goes in here, so shift click, puts it all in there. I have nothing left in the traveler's sack. In fact, it is all put away in this box, which is now crowded with stuff that doesn't belong here, like this, 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 and this. Again, I can blacklist items or whitelist items, but I find it's easier right now to not do that because I don't have a plethora of other stuff that I need to do. So let me go ahead and put the canola in here. So that's all done. What is my next step? Well, my next step is to kind of expand my IC2 stuff. I need more IC2 power. I need more IC2 machines. So looking at the Empowering Age, one of the max best things that I can get about uh, the Empowering Age is the Advanced IC2 Circuits. So let's go ahead and take a look at what those actually are. Advanced IC2 Advanced Sir, whoop, that's it right there. Boom. Oh, rocketry. I'm sure that will come into play. Advanced circuit. Holy Moses. Empowered Redstonia, 400,000. And that's just to make the one palace crystal. Just that one crystal right there. So this is, we're talking to make a single circuit. We're talking uh, 1.6 plus 1.6. We're talking 3.2 million RF just to make a single advanced redstone circuit or sorry advanced circuit i'm going to need a ton of these and that's on top of all their regular circuit making so i need to get started making that stuff sooner rather than later so first of all i need to have some prismarine cobalt i have blue slime i can get fish i 
can theoretically get. I hate fishing. But I'm going to need a lot of this. So I don't want to use a whole bunch of these resources. And one of the other things that we can do... And recipes for this is do a same one to block one to nine on this so that takes eight million rf to make so that will be cooking for a long time but based on how long it's going to take me to get all this stuff maybe that's going to be the thing this here is much more doable i actually have everything to make my redstonia crystal blocks so i'm going to go ahead and make those first i'm going to make two of them Ooh, this is going to get real expensive real fast all right, so I need two of those, two of those, two of those. I also need some red dye, so that's two poppies. And notice I kind of collected poppies earlier. I knew this was going to be an issue. And then I will need two ardite. All right, so all of this goes in, and I will actually need five hoppers. Uh, and that comes to my aluminum. I need about 25 of those. Yep. There we go. And there we go. I will have many, many more hoppers that I use, but for now we'll just run with the five. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have this to auto drop this stuff into the system so that all I have to do is pull out the one in the middle and I'm set. So the one in the middle is going to be the redstonia block and I forgot to make that. So redstone blocks turns into redstonia blocks when you hit it with a laser. Boing. So we're gonna throw, oh, 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 it went in my traveler sack. See, this is the one rough thing about having that traveler sack on you is things end up in there when you don't want them to. So I will put this away in my mining chest so that I don't keep walking around with it. The same will happen when I upgrade like my pick and stuff like that so I don't end up walking around and destroying things with my pick. Boom, there it goes. It's starting to go and those have about 800,000 each. One of those redstonia blocks takes 4 million. Hey, that's about 32. So I'm not too far off on a single redstone empowered redstone block but on two of them i'm a little ways and on two of those and the lapis thing i'm a long ways so what do i need for the lap this palace crystal <coughs> i need prismarine that's going to be not so bad it's just a simple nether quartz hit with a thing that's that's i can do that i can do that easy nether quartz Hit with a thing. Hey, check that out. Ah, oh, dang it. See what I mean? It can get really old real fast. So I'm going to go ahead and put this away. And I'm actually going to leave the item filter in here just in case I need it for something else. So I've got the palace. Now I need a cobalt ingot, which I have. That's great. I also need a blue slime crystal. So one of the things also I did off camera was I did a little bit of exploring, okay? And I went this way. I'm looking for a, a village, by the way, in all this. There's a slime island. That's kind of cool. Nothing. No villages, no villages. So I circled back. It's about nighttime now. Nothing. No villages, no villages, no villages, nothing. Nothing. That will be handy later. Um, another one of those. Still no villages. Still no villages. Still no villages. I actually had to go back and check whether or not I had enabled structures as a default to the map. And I did. I just have extremely bad luck. And I finally found a village over here. And look at how tiny that thing is. It's like six buildings. I finally find one and it's like six buildings. But I did find three of the purple slime islands, which is great. I need to go up to one of these, collect some blue slime to make that crystal. I need to do some fishing, and then I need to wait for ever until I have the Empowered Palace. So 
that's what I will be doing in the meantime. I will not be setting up any new fancy machines, so don't worry, you're not going to miss out on that. It's just a bunch of boring, repetitive stuff that's going to happen while I'm gone. So that's about to wrap it up for episode 8. Again, we did this nice sword. We did all of our mining stuff so that I can make a little bit more productive in the downtime off camera time. And we set up that canola press. So it's actually, let's go check it out and see how it's doing. So we put some canola in it right before we came back here. Let's see how fast it burned through all of that. Oh, it's still going, but it's producing 100 RF a tick. So this thing right here actually generates 80 at max, I think, with all of the water in the correct space, which I don't have. Um, so that's maybe like 70. This right here, much, much smaller footprint. And it's generating about that same amount. As you can see, we're in Struggleville right now for the first one. So it's going to be doing things in the meantime. I guess I'm just going to hop off of here. All right, everybody. Peace out.